Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorgeous milk carton caddy. So there's six individual milk cartons in here. Now this isn't my idea. This has actually been around for a long time. I know Sam on, on Sam at Poodles. She has a few on her channel and I've seen some really old tutorials. I think it was Crafty Diva. Hers was about nine, ten years ago. So they've been going around a while and the milk cartons are really common anyway. They're just such a handy, really nice kind of gift box size. So if you just want to make one of these then you can do that. I do also have other milk carton tutorials on my channel so I'll link that all up here. But I just think it's beautiful so of course this is a Valentine's theme and I'm going to be, I know exactly who I'm giving this to, so I'm looking forward to now filling it with personalised treats and gifts for that person. It's really strong so you can put some weighted things in here as well and I think it's going to work for so many occasions. So let me show you how I made it. Okay so you can see here I've already done five of the milk cartons Okay, and I've used this paper pad which I've already shared before and it's the pink paper block and I picked it up from the range. So I've got this other pattern one here. So, you know, depending on how many milk cartons you want to do, you might just want to make one milk carton and, and use that as a, you know, a gift box. This is the other version that I made and I done this, I think it was during a craft along earlier on last year. So I'll link that one as well, because it's a slightly different size. You can see the difference there. And this one's a bit thinner. So that one's taller as well. Okay, so you're going to want, in my case, I'm going to do the six. So you'll want six pieces of ten and a half by eight and a quarter. And along the ten and a half side, if it's directional paper, make sure it's facing the right way up. And you want to score at two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. And then rotate and score at two and a half, six, and seven and three quarters. Okay, so do that on however many pieces you've got and then you'll want two pieces for the handle and these measure, I've already cut one side so I'll do the rest with you in a moment. So this is whatever A4 or letter paper size length you've got, I mean it could be 12 if you want, mine's the A4 so it's about 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and 5 eighths but you want to score at two and a half on both of those pieces, it's just that one score line so the, the height is up to you. I would recommend it being taller than the, the milk carton but you can certainly reduce that if you would prefer. And then this is for the base, so this is a piece of 10 and a half by seven and seven eighths and you just want to score at one and three eighths of an inch on all four sides. That's all the scoring that's needed. You just want to fold and burnish all of the score lines. Now this top one here, I've just burnished it one way but I'm going to burnish it the other as well because it will end up being like that. Okay so now we want to do some cutting. So along this side here, so the short side with this half inch piece, I'm just going to cut the bottom rectangle piece out just to create a little tab there. So we're just keeping it attached to the middle section. So, and then you're going to cut past that score line and again down to meet it. So we've just created that tab. Then you want to just cut up all of these. In fact, you should have done that first. I've done that a little bit backwards. If those of you have followed me for years would be like, usually she'd cut along the bottom. So just cut up all of these to the first score line. This is going to be our base. And then you could just remove that piece. Then rotate it around so you have this end facing you. And again, you're going to cut down all of the score lines. But this time you're going past the first one and down to the second score line. Then you've got the tab on the right hand side, this one, the first one and the third one, okay, you want to remove that top piece. I mean you could keep it if you want but it's just going to look a bit funny with the score line through it so just take that out and then you'll be left with this. Now when we fold it up, that tab, you want to be at the back just so it, visually it looks nicer here at the front. These two side pieces will fold in and then that's where you'll see the top of the milk carton. So this one here, just fold away from you, open it back up and then all the other three just take a little wedge off the bottom, off of the sides, just so that when we fold them all in you won't get anything hanging out. Okay so that's now what you want. So this will be a perfect square still but these have all got little bits taken out those ones you just want to remove the top sections 
and then you have your tab. So do that again with however many you need and then we can start putting them together. So I'm just going to pop some glue just on that tab there, fold it over and then fold that one half so it's on top and then fold that one over and they will all line up. I always like to fold it back again and just get your bone folder there and just burnish. So again I want that join that's just in there on the back left side. You can then fold those in and fold that in and if you just pop a little peg or you might have a little bulldog clip you might want to put a hole punch, two hole punches there and then feed some ribbon through that'll look really pretty as well. Then that one's going to fold away from you and then you can start sticking down the back so I'm going to fold that one down first and I'm going to use the cloud glue now just so that you can put heavier gifts in here if you want because I will be putting a different gift in each of the cartons. So I'm just folding each one in, putting a layer of glue in between and then finish with that one and because that one you didn't cut into it will cover that really nicely and then if you do want to just go back in there I've just been using my ruler just to spread that all out. So now you will have your six. I'm going to have mine like that in the caddy. So we will now make that. So I have these two pieces. Now I've already gone ahead and die cut my oval here. Now I know if you are going to use a die machine you'd need a larger die cutting machine. So I've got the Big Shot Plus because of the width of this it wouldn't go through a standard machine. So if that's the case what you could do is lay down your oval shape and draw around it with a pencil and then cut it by hand. You could use your trimmer and just cut a square or you could use a punch and you could punch I was thinking about this, you could punch three circles so that you could put a finger through each of the circles. You could also just um, hole punch a couple of holes and put ribbon through this. Okay, so there are a few options there for you, but I've used this here and this is using the Card Making Magic A5 oval dies. I use these a lot. The reason I like these ones is because they're a squashed oval, so they're perfect for handles. So I've used the one, two, three, four, the fifth smallest to actually cut the aperture. And then I've got the next size up, which I'm going to create just a decorative handle with. So once you've done one, so I've ran that one through, I'm then going to sit it over the top of this one here and I'm going to run it through again. And it will either completely cut through it or it will leave a really good embossed pattern so I can then put the die back into that space and run it through again. But I'll show you in a sec. Okay, so I'll take that one off and you'll see that it has, if I put a shim on there actually that would have completely cut but what I'm going to do is just with my scissors, it's again it's just holding on with a thread. These are going to be stuck next to each other and they're going to have the hand, the decorative handle kind of border so I'm not too worried if it's not very neat because I'm going to be covering it. Okay and then I can now pop these back to back. In fact I need to do it that way so they do line up perfectly. And you'll see, once we stick all that together, we're going to have our handle. Now we're going to burnish those out like so, and that's going to stick into the base of the tray. These are going to stick together. Once I add the collar, that's going to be a really strong handle. Okay, so get the base done, then we can stick that in. So you would have scored at one and three eighths on all four sides. Just fold and burnish those score lines. And then along the long side, Cut up each of those score lines, like so, and then just cut a little bit again off of each side, like so, and just do that again on the opposite side. Okay, and then I'm going to add my glue on the top of one of the corners and then just bring it under bring that side around and just make sure it all lines up you get a nice straight join there you want a nice so you get a nice right angle like so so again go to the next one pop your glue on top and then bring that one under and then again that side around and just repeat that on the other end
and just go in over each of those tabs once it's all together with your bone folder just to really make sure all that glue stuck down okay but then you'll have your tray so now I'm going to grab one of these side, one of the side pieces here and I'm just going to cover from the start of that score line around all of this and then I'm going to stick that over the top and then whilst that's still drying I'm going to now open up the bottom pieces and just pop your glue on each side and this is going to reinforce the base and add a lot of strength and then just slide it into the base and it should perfectly fit if my <laughs> measurements were correct and it's going to move around like that because obviously you haven't got the cartons into support yet but just again spend a minute really making sure that that's completely secure okay so that is now all dried and it's really really strong you can see I've put all of the cartons in and they fit perfectly literally like a glove so I'm really pleased with that and then I have gone back to the dies that I use for the handle so I've got the smaller one the original one and then the larger one I've just put some washi tape and I've just ran it through my die machine I've already stuck one on the front so I'm going to stick this one on there and then I've got some gold washi tape here and I'm going to run this around here now you could mat and layer this if you wanted to with pattern paper but I, I just want to put this gold trim through because I've decided to use these butterflies to decorate I've had these for maybe 12 months 18 months something like that I, I remember getting them from from the works and um, it was just a pack of all these butterflies I've used them on gift bags you know they're really nice just to decorate but the colors in these go perfectly so I'm going to have just a large one just up the top there I think that looks beautiful and then I'm going to pop the smaller ones maybe either on the side there or on the tops there on all of those so I'm going to get everything stuck down and um, with the washi tape if because a lot of washi tape is quite low tack what I will do first is run a bead of glue and then stick the washi over the top that way you know it's not going to peel off Okay, so there's that all done. Really love how that looks now. And I'm going to do one more thing, and some of you might be like, oh my gosh, what's she about to do? But I'm going to just <laughs> shape the corners. So whatever one you shape first. So I'm going to go quite dramatic, like so. I'm then going to flip it over and pop it on that side. Should have done this before I stuck the butterfly down. Just gives it more of that caddy handle look. You could just round the corners off if you want to, but there we go. But now I just think it gives it a bit more of a, a caddy feel and um, there's not so much white space on it. But I think it looks wonderful. It's so big. I'm trying to make sure it's all in shot and you can see everything on the back there. And then you can just fill it with different gifts. I mean, you know, it's going to be perfect for so many occasions. Christmas obviously springs to mind along with, you know, birthdays and things like that. I mean, what a lovely like wedding favour or a gift to give a bridesmaid or something. I think it's wonderful. So that's it all finished. I'm going to leave it there and um, I might add, well I will, I'll, I'll add a gift tag nearer the time. But for now, I, um, I really like it. It's always also a really nice storage piece as well, I think. You know, if you do have a lot of kind of surface space, you could have this and fill it with, you know, different craft supplies, beads and buttons and all sorts and have little labels on the front of them or something. That would also look really nice. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I'm sure I've given you enough ideas on ways to use yours so I hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye